Salvation is not all in feelings, but I wouldn't give you much for a salvation that has a feeling involved with it. Thank God that you can know when something happened in your heart. Text tonight is going to be found in uh, Psalm 142 in verse 4. The psalmist was writing here, and he had a, it was at a low spot in his life. I mean, a real low spot. You know, the psalmist David went through the rough times when Saul was pursuing him and seemed like the, the nation that he loved was turning against him. They were calling him a traitor. That is, the king's people were calling him a traitor, but he was trying, quite true to King, king Saul. And then David wrote these songs, and he says, while he was in the cave of Medulla, hiding from Saul, Saul, in verse 20, he says, I cried unto the Lord with my voice. And with my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. He says, I poured out my complaint before him. I shoot him my trouble. But my spirit was overwhelmed within me. Then thou knewest my path. In the way wherein I have I walked, have they privily laid a snare for me. He says, I looked on my right hand, and behold, there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would speak to the hearts of those here tonight. Lord, I pray that the message would, would be a help. Lord, I pray that if there's anyone here tonight that's never been truly saved, this tonight would be the night they claim you for salvation. Yeah, Lord, I pray you'd be with those who can't be here because of sickness tonight. Lord, you give them strength to raise them up. We be, uh, pray you'd be with Brother Stewart's brother, both of them, the one that has the cancer, that he could be saved. And also for this one who's now has gone into the hospital. Lord, we pray you'd help them and be close with the Stewart to this time. Be with our pastor and wife as they're away, as in their, in their trip. Give them a good trip. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you ever been to the place in your life where it seemed like everything was turned against you? Where it seemed like nothing was going right? No matter what you did, it seemed like something that was just tearing you down. And you know, I would also go on to say that uh, maybe this message may be directed more toward those who have never been saved. Yet this point comes in your Christian life sometime where you may uh, identify with this person. In fact, David, King David, was the one who was penning this song. He was the man of God. And he was God's man, but yet he got discouraged like most anybody else. And it seems like that the devil can really get us to the point sometimes where we'll, we'll look like we're not going to win. The devil is going to be victorious. And at that time, he'll say, the devil will speak to us and say, See, it's not really worth it to serve God. While everything you're, was going your way, you sang, Oh, how I love Jesus. While all of your needs are seen to be uh, being met without you interceding much to God in prayer, you say, God is good. But now when the trials come, you, the devil will say, Where is your God? Where is he anyway? And you look around and it seems like God has left you. Even though you know the promise in the scripture where Jesus was said, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. But yet you look out there in the night sometime and it seems like he's not there. You look out there in the midst of uh, things that we just don't understand what's happening in our lives. And we'll say, Lord, where are you? And then you uh, turn to... Uh, some others that maybe turn to family. Sometimes you turn to the people in church, and it seems like they're not there for you. Or at least the devil would tell you that. You turn to family, and it seems like sometimes they even seem like they're against you. And the same thing was happening with David. David was fleeing. Had to leave the palace. He was fleeing. He was, he was, I mean, he was, he was, he didn't know what was coming up. He knew that he was doing God's work. He knew that he was God's man. He knew that Samuel had anointed him in an early age that he was going to be king of Israel. But it seemed like God had totally forsaken David. And in the context of this, that's why he said, I looked on the left. I looked on the right. He said, look like no man cared for my soul. That's a bad situation to be in. When it seemed like no one cares about you. 
Yet from the standpoint of the lost man, I mean, things sin uh, usually has its effect, as we taught in Sunday school this morning. So people will get into sin, getting their lives to be ruined. And it seems like nothing is going to help them. Nothing can get this, them out of this situation they've got themselves in. And they think really nobody cares. They see friends and acquaintances just turn them aside and say, you got yourself into this mess, you get it out. And they think in their soul, nobody cares for my soul. And I don't know if you've been there or not, even since you've been saved, but it may be a time when uh, you're put through a trial of your faith and you'll get to wondering, does anybody care about me? And that's when, uh, especially from the standpoint of the law, Satan draws close. He says, nobody cares about you. Why don't you just take your life and just get out of everybody else's way? After all, nobody cares about you anyway. Things at work didn't work out. Sometimes jobs are lost. Sometimes spouses are, are, are lost. Sometimes children turn against you. Sometimes they're, they're lost in death and things like this. And you say, nobody cares about me. But I'd like to say, there's some that care about you. First of all, God the Father cares about us. We read in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, the Bible says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I'd like to say God cares about us to the point that He is long-suffering with us. You remember what it was like before you came to the Lord, some of the things that you went through. And some of the things that you did that you knew were just totally contrary to the will of God, totally contrary to what He would have you to do, but yet we did them anyway. And you say, well, surely God is going to bring vengeance on me. But it looks like God is continues to be long-suffering and gives us more mercy and mercy and mercy. That's because God cares about you. I mean, we hear this on signs, we see this on the sign, and we hear about... Sometimes you get to the point, it almost sounds mushy. He says, God cares for you. In fact, that phrase is used so very much that it doesn't mean what it used to. But hey, God the Father truly cares for us. I mean, He really does. And uh, we hear all the, some stories about it where it seemed like He was there for some people. And it seemed like He really did care. But us, it seems like He doesn't care anything about it. Hey, God still cares for us. He is long-suffering. The word for long-suffering in a, in, a, in a vernacular I might put it, up, put it with is God puts up with a lot of junk on our behalf. You say, well, God doesn't care for me. I'll tell you what, from the thing like sometimes from the way we act, it don't seem like we care too much for God either. Sometimes we say family doesn't care too much for us, but in the way we act sometimes it looks like we don't care too much for family either. Sometimes it's with our spouses, I mean, they look like it's, they don't care too much for me, but the way we react, it seems like we don't care for much for our spouse. But I'm glad God goes so much further than uh, any of these uh, earthly people we can think of because He's long-suffering. The Bible says this here, He's long-suffering. He's not willing that any should perish. God goes the longest mile. He goes to the deepest valley. He goes to the driest desert in trying to bring us to salvation because he is long suffering. In fact, in First First Timothy chapter two, uh, verse three through five, it says this: "For this is good, this is good," he says, "and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth." He says he uh, he goes to the very end that we might receive. His love for us, that He may be long suffering and to demonstrate us, to us that He loves us. And then there's the old familiar verse in John 3 16 where it says, For God so loved the world. How much does God love us anyway? What English word do we have could express how much God loves us? What word of degree would ex explain how much God loves us? We don't have a, such a word, so He simply says He so loves us. And he so that word for so loves us, he demonstrates it by what he did. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God loves 